Hi, welcome to this month's edition of Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. I want you guys to get your books and your charts. Get ready for this month's edition of the Chemical of the Month. My name is Joe Gorman. I'm from Hazmat IQ. And this month we'll be doing a known chemical. The known chemical is hydrogen chloride. So obviously we're going to use our system. Step number one is I want to be able to size up hydrogen chloride. I've never been to hydrogen chloride before. I've never seen it. So I want to make sure that I can paint myself a good mental picture of what I expect to see. From, from step number one, I'm going to go to step number two, which is when I'm going to use my NIOSH. I use my NIOSH to tweak my initial size up to verify that what I've predicted is actually what we're, what we're going to see when we get there. Next will be step three. Step three is, based on my hazards, that I verified in my NIOSH, I'm going to choose PPE to protect me based on my mission. My mission is if I got to make a rescue, I got to do a quick in and quick out of a live victim that I can see, I'll be wearing turnout gear and breathing apparatus. If I've got all day and I want to choose level A, if it's a corrosive gas, I'll go down that road. But no matter what I choose in PPE, I got to remember I will always bring my meter cockpit because my meter cockpit will protect me from whatever hazards I approach based on what I'm wearing. Next thing, step number four. I've got my PPE based on my mission. I've built my meter cockpit to protect me from hazards that I can't see. Step four is enter the hot zone. I'm going to only risk a lot if I can save a lot. What does save a lot mean? If there's a life to be saved. In our class, line of sight rescue. You'll notice that on the bottom of that box, you'll see plumbing. A lot of people ask, what does plumbing mean? Well, to make it simple for us, plumbing is every other mission besides your line of sight rescue. All right, let's get started on hydrogen chloride. Get your charts out because we use that for step number one. So from step number one, we're going to get the name. Look in the alphabetical list for the first name hydrogen. You don't see it. So if it's not there... That's a no, so our size up will be above the line. Above the line will give us this. There's our size up. Remember what size up means now. It is a prediction of what I expect to see when I get there. These are not gospel truth. This is our worst case scenario size up. You notice the bottom bullet down here says I will continue on chart number three. So we go to chart number three. This one allows us to tweak our initial size up. In other words, uh, when we're in an above the line box, we have every hazard that we could possibly have for every above the line chemical. If I'm able to, to use chart number three and find a family or give it a number red one through red 16, uh, I'll be able to kind of whittle away some of my hazards. So we always start on chart three in the flammable clue box. I want to know if it's flammable and I look for any part of the word hydrogen chloride. I don't see anything from hydrogen to chloride there, so that gives me a no. I now follow my flow chart over to the corrosive gas clue box, and I look for, not the second name, the first name. And it says, uh, I go alphabetical, the first name of hydrogen chloride is hydrogen. Hey, there it is. I notice it's in red. Red means that it's an acid. I go down to the bottom of that box, and I say, that is a corrosive gas, that's an acid. I will respond using red zero. What is red zero? Red zero is the corrosive gas family. Based on that family, it says in hazard box, could be flammable, could be toxic, could be corrosive. Uh, the pH and F box, you'll notice there's an X for all three. It could be hydrogen fluoride, it could be hydrogen chloride. So it could be a, a corrosive gas with fluorine, or it could be, like we have, hydrogen chloride. I don't hear the word fluorine in it, or fluoride, so I don't predict there's going to be fluorine in it. But for now, what the hell? We'll keep fluorine in there till we get to the book. Then I bring my temp gun to measure any type of reactivity. I want to make sure that I bring my LEL meter for flammability. Down the road, I'll find out if I can use my PID or FID to measure toxicity. I'll go over to my PPE box, and I'm going to be based on my mission. I can wear turnout gear to make a rescue if the person's alive. Or if you notice, there's an X there for level A if I'm in the plumbing mode. 
Level B will have an X in it too. It's not the best level of protection, but if that's all your job gives you, guess what you're going to wear? And then the last box over there will be level C, or if you're in the military, mop gear. Again, that's not going to protect your skin from the corrosive gas, but if that's all you got, that's what you got to wear. Okay, next, what will we do? We've come up with our size up. We've predicted hazards. I need to now go to the book and make sure what I find in the book is, is, base, is going to be accurate based on my initial size up. So here we go to hydrogen chloride, hydrogen chloride in our NIOSH, and what we're going to do is we're going to go right down this list, we're going to go down and see, make sure that this is indeed a gas, and then just verify hazards based on what we find in the book. So the first prediction we had was that it was a gas. So we go to the NIOSH, we look under physical description, and then indeed it is a gas. So we circle the letter G, it's a gas. Now I want to know if it's explosive. Explosive guides are 112, 113, 114. If you notice, it's not a 112, 113, or 114, not explosive. So we can cross that hazard out. Next prediction. Well, we think it could be radioactive, but let's verify it. Again, we're in the DOT box. We're looking for 161, 162, 163, 164, or 165, or 166. Not radioactive. Perfect. Next question, is it corrosive? Our DOT guides for corrosive gases are 118, 123, 124, 125. This happens to be a 125 corrosive gas. Perfect. Now we go to the formula. Hey, is this, this hydrogen fluoride or hydrogen chloride? Does it have fluorine in it? Well, we'll look in the formula box. For what letter? F. No F, no fluorine. Still, remember, bring your fluorine paper just in case you got the bad information. You'd hate to hear this one. Hey, my bad, it wasn't hydrogen chloride, it was hydrogen fluoride. So I want you to bring your F paper just to protect you, just in case you get bad info. Next hazard we're going to predict, we're going to verify. Flashpoint. I want to know if this gas is flammable. I look in the properties box, chemical physical properties. I look under FLP, NA, ain't none. Why does it say ain't none? Because this chemical is not flammable. Great news for us. Because we can, when we're, looking, we're dealing with corrosive gases, my initial PPE when I'm going to do plumbing is level A. But when I have something that's flammable, level A and flammability, you know, you guys know that that doesn't work too well. So this is a no-brainer. Easy. For plumbing, I will wear level A to protect my skin from this corrosive gas that's not flammable. Next. I want to know where this gas is going to accumulate. Will it go high? Will it go low? Molecular weight tells us that. Air equals, I think I heard you guys say it, 29. Molecular weight of hydrogen chloride, 36, heavier than air. Okay, so we got a heavier than air, corrosive gas, not flammable. Now let's see if this gas can be mixed with water. Let's look under solubility. Greater than 10% tells us that this gas can be diluted in water. It's 67%, so this can be diluted in water. Next, can I use my PID to measure this leaking gas? Remember, our PIDs have a lamp in it of 10.6. For our PID to be able to see it, to be able to measure it, the IP must be less than the lamp, so it must be less than 10.6. This is 12.74. Ain't working. Next, does it have carbon and hydrogen? Because I, I want to know if I got carbon and hydrogen because I want to know if I can use my FID. Well, ah, look at that trick. You see a C and you see an H. Does it have carbon and hydrogen? No, it has hydrogen and chlorine. When you have carbon in the formula, it'll be a, it'll be a capitalized C with no lowercase letter next to it. So you look at chlorine. Capital C, lowercase l. That is not carbon, it's chlorine, so it does not have carbon and hydrogen. You cannot use your FID. Next thing I want to know is it going to react with air and water. I go in my incompatibilities and reactivities, and I look for water and air, and I see neither. But remember, corrosive gases, when they mix with water, the pH will be changing based on dilution. When pH changes... We have chemical reactions and increased heat. So remember, if you, if you take hydrogen chloride or even hydrochloric acid or any other acid and you add water to it, 
you will have increasing temperature. Okay, so we've done step one, which was size up. We've done step two, which is verify. Now we go to step number three, which is PPE and meters. Well, our meter cockpit is the same no matter what our chemical is, but what do you want to wear on this one now? Well, let me give you the first hypothetical. You arrive on the scene, you got a leaking cylinder, listen, and you got information saying it is a corrosive gas. You show up in Turnac gear and level, uh, Turnac gear and breathing apparatus, level A is, is a half an hour away. We got somebody alive yelling, help, help. What are you going to do? Wait a half an hour for your level A or do a quick in and quick out wearing Turnac gear and breathing apparatus? We recommend, since there is a line of sight, rescue. The rescued, the victim is wearing what I'm wearing. You're wearing Turnac gear and breathing apparatus. Quick in, quick out. Make the rescue. Do a decon. Plenty of water. Cool off anything that's burning on their skin. Peel off your turnout gear. Decon your turnout gear. And then when it comes to plumbing, no more turnout gear. Since it's a corrosive gas that's not flammable, for the plumbing, we'll be using level A. So a couple of things about, you know, hydrochloric acid and, and hydrogen chloride. A lot of times I've seen teams respond to hydrochloric acid and they look in their NIOSH and they can't find hydrochloric acid. When it looks up, when you get a synonym and trade name for hydrogen chloride, it gives you hydrochloric acid. Remember, when you hear the last name acid, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be in solution. So let me give you an example. Hydrogen chloride is the gas. Hydrochloric acid is that gas in a solution. So which one of these is a gas? Hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid? Right. The hydrofluoric acid is the solution. Hydrogen fluoride is the gas. All right. So look, here we did. We did hydro, hydrogen chloride. We found out in the size it was above the line. We went to chart number three. We found out it was a red one. Uh, excuse me, red zero, corrosive gas. We chose our meters. We chose our PPE based on our mission. We, we mitigated this incident. Quick in, quick out for rescue. We got all day for plumbing. You got a hydrogen chloride leak, you put level A on, you go in there, no big deal. Don't forget, proper decon to, present, to prevent secondary contamination. All right, so that's this month's edition of Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month for Hydrogen Chloride. Listen, you guys, if you got any chemicals that you're responding to and you want us to run it as, as maybe next month's Chemical of the Month, send us an email at info at hazmatiq.com. Next month, Chris Aguirre will be back with me, and we'll do next month's together. For now, you guys be safe out there, and hang on. Peace out.